Hey guys, uh, Mr. B here again, bringing another math video. This video is on quadratic inequalities in one variable. So, if you've done any inequality work, basically, uh, inequality is going to have a solution that's going to be a range of numbers. So there are many solutions, an infinite number of solutions to many inequalities. Um, so this one's no different. So what we need to do is we need to figure out the the solution interval. So that's what I would call it for this, the solution interval. So it's a range of the values of x that would that make up my solution. So ignore the messy writing there, guys. All right, so the first thing we need, again, with much of this stuff, it's all the things that we generally know about a quadratic. So we want to, first of all, find the x-intercepts, because that's where our boundary points are going to lie for our solution interval. So, and then I'll explain a little bit more what's going on as we go through, guys. So let's solve this one. That, so you can use quad form if you wanted to, quadratic formula. Or you can go ahead and just use AM method. So it adds to give me negative 2, and then multiplies to give me negative 3. So it would be x minus 3, x plus 1 is equal to 0. So that gives me x is equal to 3, and then x is equal to negative 1. So those are my two x-intercepts. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put those on a number line. So here's my number line. And negative 1 goes right here. And then 3 goes right here. So once I have those, then what I want to do is I want to kind of think about the shape of this quadratic. So if I go back to this original function here, this original inequality, this is a quadratic that opens up because it has an a value that's positive. So I'm just going to dot it in here. The reason why I'm dotting it is simply because I want to know the shape of it. And it's not really part of my number line, but this is what I'm visualizing in my head. You don't really need to draw it, but I'm writing down what you, what I see in my head. So basically anywhere it's above this number line or the x-axis, it's positive. So it's over here it's going to be plus between negative 1 and 3 it's minus and then after 3 it's positive so this is where it's above the x-axis that's why it's important to have the x-intercepts because that's where you're going to get the change from negative y to positive y essentially right for the graph is negative the graph is less uh, not negative alright so we're looking for where this where this guy is less than zero. So we're looking for the negative part of the graph. So that's right here. So the number line gives us to us right away. So that's my solution interval. So the solution interval is between negative one and three. Now the only thing we need to consider is negative one and three included. And the answer is absolutely not because it doesn't have the equal to part. So at these places we put empty circles. So if I actually put negative 1 in here, I would have 0 on this side is less than 0. That's not true. So therefore it's not part of the solution. So we shade in here. So that's actually the solution interval between here and here. Now we write it in interval notation. So it says x belongs to, and I'll use round brackets because of the empty circle, negative 1 to 3. So we use round brackets in inter interval notation when we um, have a solution that's not included. So square brackets if it was. All right, so let's try this one. So the only difference with this one is now that this one opens down. So I have x squared plus x plus 12 is equal to 0. So in order to solve this guy, I can kind of do whatever I want with it, guys. Once I have it equal to 0, I can solve it because the x-intercepts are not going to change whether I multiply this by number or change the signs or something. As long as I do it to both sides or as long as I do it consistently throughout the left side, equal to 0 is not going to change, obviously. So I have x squared minus x minus 12. So I'm just flipping the signs just to make it easier to be able to factor it. So it adds to give me negative 1, multiplies to give me 12. Negative 12, so it's x minus 4 x plus 3 is equal to 0, so that works. So that's x is equal to 4, x is equal to negative 3. So that's my two solutions. I put them on a number line. So negative 3 and 4. So again, I'm dotting in the graph only with the purpose of you guys visualizing what's happening. It serves no other purpose. It's not part of the solution. It's just for visualization. So you don't need to draw it if you can picture it. So again, 
because we have just a less than part here, no equal to part, I'll do empty circles around this. So we're looking to label this graph with plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus. So where's a positive, where's a negative? So the difference is when it's negative below the x-axis, these two arms are negative. This one's positive, it's above, and then this one's below, so it's negative. So my solution, less than zero, we're looking for the negative regions. So we're looking for out here and out here. So we're going to need two intervals for this. So we're going to need from negative infinity all the way to negative three. So x belongs to negative infinity to negative three. And I'm using round brackets. You always use round brackets with infinities, but again, round brackets with the numbers because you have the empty circles. And then four. This is a union symbol, so it's just like joining two sets, like married, union. They're put together. So four all the way to positive infinity. And there it is, guys. That's how you solve a quadratic inequality. So this might be useful for if you were trying to find the domain of a root function or if you were trying to find the domain of a log. So these things all have um, restrictions where what's underneath has to be greater than zero for a root function. Same thing with a log. What's inside the log has to be greater than zero. So hopefully this helps, guys. Thanks for watching. Like, share, subscribe. I will see you guys in class.